G'day everyone, Lucas here from the Aussie Gamers Experience and today I'm taking a look at Zera Survival. Uh, this is a casual review where I'm going to talk about the game while I play it. So let's get into it. Okay, so first thing you get to choose your region. Now I am in Australia so I'm going to pick Oceanic, but you can pick any of them. Okay, uh, right now let's go into the one that's most populated. There's not a lot of these ones here. We've got 5 out of 35 players. Uh, sometimes you might want to pick one server that has not many players if you want to start off and not have too many PvP in encounters because this game is PvPVE, which means person versus person per uh, versus environment as well. So you've got environmental factors as well. So basically the, the premise of this game is that uh, robots have been made, humanoid robots, and they've gone rogue and an attempt to shut them down has been unsuccessful which has mean basically it's a, a war against the machines it's a little bit of a uh, uh, skynet kind of situation now one of the coolest features here is the global uh, storage locker or what i can't remember what they call it global stash okay so basically on the right hand side here is everything that i have looted and stored in my global inventory which basically means if I go into a different server, uh, even if it's just a different, different server on the Oceanics, or if I go into a completely different server, say if I want to go into the American servers, this is all going to be available there. Now, I'm going to... No, I, don't, I won't put on my uh, night vision goggles. I'll put on uh, some uh, equipment here, some armor, a helmet. I'll take out a... MP5, I've got two of those. I'll take a Glock, and just in case I get killed, I think that's all I'll take. Oh, maybe I'll take an axe. I've got three of those anyway. And I might take a med kit as well. Oh, I almost forgot. I better take some ammo. Now, I need nine millimeter rounds, so I'm going to take, uh, I'll take 80 rounds. All right, now I heard a rumor that this game was made by one person. I, I don't actually think that's true. Maybe it is, I don't know. But uh, what I have found is that there's a company in New Zealand known as Kiwi Interactive have made this game. Uh, I've changed a couple of keybinds. Have a look at the map. All right, now the map is not the biggest map I've ever seen, but it's still pretty big considering you do a lot of it on foot. But mind you, there are vehicles. You can't use these vehicles here. There is a, a quad bike that I have used before. Uh, I don't know where you find them. I took that off some other players that gave it to me last time. But this helipad here, uh, a helicopter will land here. And you can jump on that. You've got 40 seconds to get on it once it lands. And the helicopter will fly down here to the, to the other safe zone. So you can get sort of kind of fast travel, but you actually have to wait for it to fly. So you can see like sky views and all that sort of stuff. It'll fly you across there. So if you want to get across the other side of the map relatively safely, you can do that. We've got some supplies on their way. We've marked it on your map. Okay, so there's also these uh, drops, which there it is there. Now I'm a bit far away from that one, so I probably won't make it. But uh, let's let's go. I'm going. Yeah, I'm going the right direction. Now, uh, a, a pretty simple yet very effective game. I've really enjoyed my time with this. Now, you can do stuff like change camera to first person view. Uh, you can put night vision goggles on, which I don't have at the moment, which is good for night time. Night time's good to go under the cloak of darkness to go and, and scout out areas. That's good against actual people. Uh, however, once you, uh, I've just left the safe zone, which means I'm now vulnerable to anything. So whether it be robots or other players. When you're in the safe zone, though, you can't take damage, which is good. Uh, you can have a look at who's in the server by pressing P. So I've got a few people in this one. And you can team up with people. I haven't done that yet, but it is an option. So if you go over them, you can invite to group. I don't know if that means that they can't kill you anymore because they're in your group. But you can do that. You could do a global chat too by pressing the T button on the keyboard. And then you can voice chat. Let's have a look. Where am I? Okay, we'll go down to Rockdale and see if we can uh, get some loot. And basically the idea in this game is uh, go get loot and take it back. It's essentially what it is. You get XP for kills. 
Uh, you got the level bar. You can see it there at the top. I'm level three, half halfway through level three. As you level up, you're going to unlock things, get a little bit more powerful compared to like when up against uh, the environment. So the robots, the robots at the moment, there's the only, I've only seen one kind of robot, which I'll show you once I get into Rockdale, because they don't tend to be out this way. Uh, I might use the auto run feature so I can have to hold the keys. And uh, yeah, I've only seen the one kind of humanoid robot however there are different kinds there are some that will just die and there are some that will explode upon uh, being killed as well sort of like a, a kamikaze robot let's have a look in this area here this is just a little campsite you can sometimes find stuff that's dirty water i haven't drank dirty water yet i don't know if that makes you sick all right while i'm making my way to rockdale these red fists over here they're kind of like community events now they're they're a little little bit sketchy going into those things because other people are going to want to do that and you, you may be able to work as a team to kill all the robots and then get good loot at the end of it because then it drops two loot crates but the chances are once you kill all the robots the other people are going to try and kill you so they can take all the loot for themselves uh, that's something I probably wouldn't attempt again until I've got a group of my friends playing it with me because uh, it's almost a death sentence. Alright, just as I get into Rockdale, it's worth noting I'm playing on Early Access. You can see the version up in the top left-hand corner there, 0.0.85-39085. This isn't the final game. And you can loot some of these, these boots of the car. Or as uh, the game refers to them as trunks. That's uh, an American reference there. In Australia, we call it the boot. That is the boot of the car. Okay, got a pistol, first aid kit. Now, I would imagine there is a military base. Military base, I haven't been there yet. That might have some decent loot. But yeah, you can pick up some pretty decent guns in this game from uh, pistols, which are actually really good. MP5, you got so, uh, what are they called those? Semi, no, what are they called? I don't know, machine guns, for lack of a better term at the moment. You can get sniper rifles, long rifles. Uh, I haven't got a shotgun yet, but I think they are in the game from what I've read. And uh, and it's quite simple with the survival stuff. Down on the bottom left, you'll see a little chicken bone thing. You've got to eat food and you've got to drink water. Okay, that's it. I quite like that. I hate those games that give you way too many things to, to monitor. It's... um. It's quite painful. Now, ah, there we go. All right, we're up to our first robot. Uh, I'm going to switch to single fire. Because I think automatic is a little bit of overkill. And you get some loot from them. Got, got some ammo. And I don't know what the other thing was. But yeah, that's, that's, that's essentially the environmental enemies there. There's a baseball bat. And you get loot from them from the robots when you kill them. Haven't seen any different variations. Hopefully they bring in some different ones. Like I reckon it'd be good to have some dog-like enemies. Uh, some massive Ed 209 if you're familiar with uh, the Robocop series. That'd be sick if they had some massive big bipedal monstrous robots. That'll be cool. But uh, pretty neat game man. The graphics are good. It runs really stable. Uh, I'm not sure if there was an update or if this is a better server, but I'm getting higher frames per second. Alright, here's some food. Uh, and it's quite simple. You go into your inventory and I'll eat the food. And then my food goes up to 93 there. Uh, I haven't experienced it too much because I don't really let it get down too low. But I would imagine if one of them goes down too low, your food or your water, you probably start taking, uh, taking damage, losing health. Uh, the houses, I think they'll probably do some work on this because they all look like they've either just been built or they've just moved out. Some of the houses have furniture. This one does not. But they don't look very lived in. Which is weird for a post-apocalyptic world where the machines have taken over. But yeah, so you, you, you get loot, you kill things, get XP, rinse and repeat. Then you've got to make, it, make your way back 
to the safe zones without dying, essentially. This one doesn't have any furniture either. So the game's still being built, clearly. Uh, one of the scary things is uh, when you go into your global inventory, there's a warning that tells you that the global inventory may be completely wiped for balancing reasons. But when they do updates and stuff, you might have stuff in there that they've removed or altered. So to keep the game fair for newcomers, they wipe your inventory. Uh, another night vision goggle. I was hoping to get another one of them, so that way if I do lose one, I'm not left in the dark. Right. There we go. There's a little bit of furniture. Oh, there's some people chatting. No way, I just got my quad stuck. Alright, so let's... Let's try and make our way back now. There's usually a lot more machines in the actual cities or the little marked map sections. I only had those two machines, two robots. Got to keep a keen ear out too, because you'll hear other human enemies before you see them. You'll hear footsteps. We've got some supplies on their way. We've marked it on your map. Alright, supplies. Oh, that's up here. It's too far away. Unless you can get yourself a quad, which, like I said, I don't know where to get them from. I don't know if they randomly spawn. Because I got mine from the safe zone. A guy, another player had it, and he told me that I could have it. He didn't want it. Because he was going to use the helicopter. Alright, we'll beeline it back to Castle Rock Settlement. And hopefully we'll make it... Oh, there's another one down here. Hopefully we'll make it without being killed. Uh, another thing worth noting as well, is a lot of wildlife sounds, like you'll hear wolves howling. Be nice if one howled right now. But, uh... I haven't seen any. I don't think there is any actual wildlife. Maybe they might be added in later. But, currently they're not. Okay, I've made it into the safe zone now, so I'm now not able to take any damage, which means I'm home and hosed. The safe zone kicks in a little bit before you actually get to the base, which is really good. So I'm in it now. I'm inside that circle, the green circle. Down at the bottom left it says, inside safe zone, you cannot take damage. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to insert some footage here from my live stream that I played last night, because I had a, an encounter with another player. And what it actually has is kind of like a rogue system, kind of like if you are familiar with uh, the Division. When you're in the Dark Zone, you go, you go rogue once you attack another player. Similar thing happens here. If you attack another player, you will go rogue, okay? It's not as fancy and over the top as in the Division, but you'll essentially get a seven minute countdown timer in the bottom left hand corner of the screen. And when that uh, that counter is uh, is going, you can't enter or you're not protected by safe zones. So you need to stay away until that counter goes back down. And then once it has, then you're welcomed back in the safe zone. So it sort of pays to uh, not attack other people. But at the same time, if you don't, then they may attack you and kill you. Like this. Oh, you did come up from behind me. I figured that was probably going to happen, but... Okay, so that was that encounter that I had in that live stream with the other player. I didn't get to kill him, unfortunately, and I had someone sneak up from behind and, and take me out. Uh, but it was a good, fun experience there. I, I probably need some better weapons. I needed a scope, that's for sure. And uh, I also needed somebody to watch, watch my back, which would have been handy. But anyway, alright, just before I finish the review, now we'll go into the um, uh, global inventory. So now I can put these things away that I don't necessarily need. I've uh, got some stuff here. I'm not sure about the drone blades, what you do with those. There's a whole heap of stuff that uh, uh, I need to, to work out with this game. But so far I'm really enjoying it. It's got a lot of potential. I'm not doing a full-blown review on this now because I don't know a lot about it just yet. Not everything anyway. And it's going to keep changing because it's in early access.
As you see down there, warning, during early access your inventory may be wiped. Here's that helicopter that I was telling you about. And you can jump in that. I might... Let's do that now. And it'll be, uh, give you a count... Well, it doesn't give you a countdown, but there's 45 seconds that it lands for. After 45 seconds, it'll take off. Let's skip to that. Oh, there we go. We're about to take off. There was the, uh, the wolf. You can hear that wolf every now and then. Uh, but there's no wolves that I know of. Alright, so the helicopter will take off with you in it, and I, I don't think there's a limit to the people that can get in, not that I know of, not that it tells you. And now it's going to fly across the map, bring up the map, so it's going to fly from here, we've got a little blue helicopter, it's going to fly in a straight line all the way down to here, and land in the Golden, or the Golden Eagle Settlement, which is the second safe zone, and then you can go from there. So if you wanted to get this, it's probably the quickest way to come down here, and then go to it there. So you get to chill out in the helicopter and watch the scenery as you go by. You can't jump out. It's no oh shit, you can jump out! How do you use it? I have no idea how to pull the chute. Oh, it automatically pulls the chute! Well, I've just learnt something. You can use the helicopter and jump out. Right. I pressed these buttons. Last time I played it, I mustn't have pressed the one. I don't actually know which one. Maybe it's E. Anyway, I'm going to get my ass back to a safe zone, because I haven't really prepared to this. But anyway, that's uh, that's it for this casual review of Zera Survival Early Access. It's available now on Steam. Go and check it out if it's uh, of any interest to you. In its early stage now, it is very playable. Uh, so I would recommend picking it up. And, uh, and it's going to be a fun game to come back to every now and then to see how the development process is going because it's being an early access, it's going to have things added to it. Things are going to be streamlined and uh, obviously added to the game. So thank you very much for checking out this video. I am Lucas from the Aussie Gamers Experience. Oh, and before I finish off, don't forget to give this video a like and subscribe. I would really appreciate that. Any support is absolutely uh, appreciated. Anyway, as always, I am Lucas, and until next time, I will see ya!